Welcome to Rocket Fuel. I'm just going to take a second, just a couple minutes to introduce my story and really what we're about and kind of why we're doing it and kind of highlight some people along the way, just kind of give some expectations on, you know, what the future might look like. But just going to kick it off. You know, my story actually begins with social media. I was, you know, 14, 15 years old and I was in high school. Um, you know, so you think freshman, sophomore year of high school. And at the time, um, I was actually overcoming a kind of a many years of battle and depression and, and different kind of things like that. And I had found purpose in serving others and, you know, providing, um, you know, contribution, or adding value to people's lives, or how can I make someone else happy that actually in turn made me happier. Um, so long story short, I started a skateboard manufacturing company while in high school. And it was a lot of fun. I got to meet a lot of cool people and got to do events and make cool longboards. But um, during this time, I was trying to discover like, how can I sell longboards on the internet? Long story short, the platform that I focused on the most at that time that I just spent the most time as a social media user was Twitter. And so over the course of about a year, I started to talk to a lot of other Twitter page owners who own big Twitter pages. And I would just purely try to build relationships with them. Um, I would ask them questions like, hey, how did you get started in this? Do you make money doing this? Um, does this not overwhelm you managing 20 Twitter accounts? Like, how do they do this stuff? And, you know, the reality was I would message probably, I don't know, 40 to 50, 60 plus Twitter accounts, maybe even more than that. A good handful of them might have been owned by the same person. Um, and and, and by, by the way, I say, when I say Twitter account, I don't just mean like, you know, someone's Twitter account. There's something called a theme account that you can find on a lot of social media pages where it's not really like a person or a business, but it's like food porn or car porn or, you know, funny memes, or it's like some type of topic or theme that is generating a lot of attention on their content around that particular theme. Um, and so I'll just reach out to these page owners and a lot of them would blow me off every now and then one would, you know, reach back out and I'd actually be able, be able to build a relationship with them and connect with them. Eventually, I was able to, you know, one, one of these big account owners who had like 20, 30 uh, Twitter accounts and millions of followers, he would buy and sell Twitter accounts. So he would sell a Twitter account with just the handle. So the at handle, um, where you would do like at, you know, like my at handle is JJ, so Jeremy Miller with two J's. He would just sell those, not even the, the, the account as a whole, but just like if you think about on Google where you can buy and sell domains, but not necessarily like the whole website, like just the domain behind the website, there's value behind that. Like if you own, you know, realestate.com, that's probably a pretty, you know, valuable URL to own. Same thing with social media. If you own the real estate handle or at realtor on Instagram or Twitter, all of a sudden you could do a lot with that for your own business. And so he would do a lot of different things like that. He would sell ads to businesses on his Twitter accounts and he would actually buy, flip and sell the Twitter accounts um, as if it was digital real estate. Some of these Twitter accounts he would buy for a couple hundred dollars. He would use his other accounts to grow them. And after about six to eight months, you know, these accounts would have tens to hundreds of thousands of new followers, real followers. And then he could sell these, turn around and sell these accounts for thousands of dollars. Um, and it was a pretty cool business. So I built a relationship with him. He really liked what I was doing with my skateboard business. And I was really open about my story about depression. And we just kind of became friends. He ended up giving me one of his throwaway accounts. And it was an account with 10,000 followers. It was pretty dead, but there's still a good hand, you know, of those 10,000 followers, obviously not all of them were, were active, I should say, but the account, you know, nothing was posted on him for many, many months. It was truly like a throwaway account for him. He was operating at you know, Twitter accounts are like 150,000 plus followers. So like a 10K account, it's just like, it does. And, and I'm not saying like, oh, 10,000 followers is nothing to him. That's not necessarily what I'm saying. It was just this account wasn't really generating anything. Maybe at one time in the past, it had a lot of engagement, but it was a throwaway account to him. Still could have had value and merit to be turned into something. He gave it to me. He gave me this account for free and I went uh, aggressive. I mean, I... The year after I took that account, I had like 10,000 followers. Within about a year, I got up to 55,000 followers and was hitting 10 million impressions every single month for free. By that point, I started to pick up a couple other Twitter accounts because I was able to make some money or you know, take some IRL cash that I was making with other things and then invest that into some Twitter accounts. And over time, what I found was I was making more money and having more success on Twitter and social media than the actual longboard business. And in fact, at that time, the longboard and skateboard company was failing. I wasn't figuring out how to successfully manufacture the same 
you know, custom longboard or a different custom longboard. And there was just a lot of money going into the manufacturing and it was just a couple of high school kids. And long story short, I closed that business, but a mentor of mine at the time, and I'm so thankful for um, just reaching out to people and, and some people entrusting me, you know, with their wisdom. Um, but, he, you know, he was like, Jeremy, you're 16 years old. You need to stop trying to take over the world. You need to focus on like what you're best at. You need to double down and become a student at this thing. Don't think that you're, you just because you're able to do some stuff on Twitter doesn't mean, you know, you're the best mark in the world, but double down this area and figure out how to scale here. And so long story short, you know, I'm not going to say like the next day I was like, oh, just close a business, you know, thousands of dollars down the drain. Let, let's go to the next thing. It was definitely hard. It was very hard and embarrassing because, you know, my whole school knew about my business and the other high schools in the area knew about my business. And we had a big Instagram following. And so I felt like I had let people down. Um, but again, I should say the important note about my mentor was saying, A, humble yourself, but then B, double down in an area that you have some expertise in. So we're about 2015 ish, 2016, and I'd say 2014 to 2015 was mostly uh, Twitter years. Then from like 2015 into 2015 and 2016 coming in 2017 is really when I started to post content, make content for myself. So at this point, now I have a social media marketing agency where I'll you know manage your social media. Um, you know, 2017 was also my senior year of high school. Um, by this point, I was you know very sure that I was not going to college and that you know the social media thing and just entrepreneurship was something that I was going to keep um, you know going into. Um, long story short, I had learned how to get content to go viral on Twitter and with con other people's content. So none of the content that I post on Twitter, it was like I didn't create it. I might have created a few things, but it was all stuff that was off the internet. It was you know curated stuff. It was stuff from other accounts. It was a lot of curation and, re and re uh, reposting. So then I was like, well, can I build a brand for myself? Can I create content for myself? Can I, can I have successful engagement on content that I make of Jeremy and that can I hopefully like impact my business or something like that? And it worked. In 2017, I posted four videos every single week on Facebook. Um, and some of those videos would get 300 views. Some of those videos would get 20,000 views. And in that year, I really like mastered videos and, and, and ads on Facebook and how to create content for myself, how to think about content ideas, how to make the content creation process simpler. Because when posting on all these different channels and when you're running multiple different accounts, you can so easily burn yourself out. Um, and But then also just being in the trenches, I was really seeing you know, what was working, what wasn't working. Um, it was kind of around this time that I had another mentor. Um, his name is Dennis Yu, and he owned an analytics and Facebook ads agency called Blitz Metrics. Um, some of their clients were the Golden State Warriors, Nike, Ro Rosetta Stone. Um, and so just the sphere of influence, the people that I was talking to at the top, top levels in marketing, digital marketing, personal branding, you know, by this time, even while in high school, um, I was traveling around the country and even some parts around the world. And then once I graduated high school, I went even more traveling around the world and all around the country, just meeting some of the best and the best um, in the different spaces simultaneously building my personal brand and putting content out there, getting speaking engagements, getting on Forbes and Success Magazine and getting verified on social media. It was the compound effect of putting four videos on Facebook every single week uh, for a year and then continuing that posting content, posting the best content, um, having a strategy to amplify my best performing content. So if I had a video that performed really well, well, then I would amplify by putting ad dollars on it. So by this time, I really kind of had a lot of different opportunities in social media. Um, you know, probably one of my favorite clients I, I worked for, and now I'm kind of really flash forwarding a little bit. Um, one of my favorite clients that I worked for in the last couple of years, his name is Joey Chestnut, and he's pretty prevalent on this platform here we are with YouTube. If you know anything about Mr. Beast, which you probably do if you're here on YouTube, um, Joey's got a good handful of videos with Mr. Beast. One of their videos has like 80 million views. Um, so I started working with Joey. I, I met Joey uh, through an awesome gentleman named Bryn Jones. He's a CMO of Hughes Culinary, which is a large restaurant management group in Indianapolis, Indiana. I was actually working for this company um, kind of part time kind of as, as a consultant. And I was introduced to Joey um, through a, a, a couple of different things. And I became working with Joey as a videographer, social media manager, just kind of like branding strategy in general traveled the country with him to, you know, a dozen plus 
maybe more you know eating contests, big ones, small ones. Um, you know, was able to accomplish some world records with Joey. He ate the uh, he beat the world record for the most Big Macs ever eaten in one sitting. We did it here in Indianapolis. We rented an Airbnb. He ate forty Big Macs in thirty eight minutes, <laughs> which is just. I don't even know what you want to think about that. But long story short, that video that you know I was able to film and direct and edit and everything, it got like 18 million views on on YouTube, went viral all over the internet and a lot of different clips and things like that. So the pattern with me in my career is just content and social media and just kind of doubling down, finding different people who I really want to work with, who I have a lot of really fun working with. Um, and that kind of flash forward to after working with Joey is I was actually unsure if I wanted to work with individuals and I was working for a software company a very, a very good friend of mine and a couple of friends of mine they were you know launching this ve- you know, what was looking to be a very successful um, technology startup and I had a lot of um, just admiration for for, for startups I, I've worked with, with a couple of different tech startups in the past and um, I really like the environment to an extent um, and I really like the atmosphere and like the mindsets of the people within a startup to an extent um, but this was an awesome you know, place to work at, you know, had a lot of fun, learned a lot. This is actually the place where I met my fiance. Um, so I, I'm, you know, I, I can never say anything positive or I can never not say anything positive about working at Connected, um, which was a LinkedIn lead generation company. That was that software company that I worked for. And I was the VP of marketing. But the best part about this is that I met my fiance, Ashley, uh, through, through, through working with that company. Um, after that company, you know, I, I kind of worked there for about a year and a half. I was marketing hire number one. And when I left, they had over 130 employees and, you know, it was grossing to be a $25 million company. Um, so I was able to really see a lot of cool things built from the scratch and see how the founders build products and test products and such. Um, but after that engagement and after that uh, working relationship, um, I find myself engaged, but I just wasn't sure what I wanted to do work wise. And for so long, work just came to me opportunity just came to me and i would just pick oh i like that one or i don't like that one or i'll choose this one and you know when i worked at that software company for a year it was great but over that year i didn't put any content out for myself because i was putting so much content out for the company and i just kind of almost dis i didn't disappear you know because i was definitely still posting like instagram stories and such but you know the um the level of content that I was putting out, you know, when I, around when I was working with Joey compared to when I was I connected just with where my mindset was, was dramatically different. So when I came out, you know, I was like, what do I, what do I want to do? Um, you know, social media consulting and coaching and, and working with people and how to find content that amplifies word of mouth marketing is a type of stuff that I love. And so um, I just started doing a bunch of side consulting, you know, one off consulting projects, you know, some retainer consulting projects and Still not sure what I wanted to do. Still not sure who I wanted to really be working with. Um, There's a guy by the name of Remington Ramsey. And (laughs) people like to joke that he's the most popular non-realtor in real estate in Indiana. Um, Because long story short, Remington is someone who I've known for probably four to five years. Um, About seven, eight-ish years ago, he started a real estate magazine called Real Producers. He started it here in Indianapolis. It was all focused around the top 500 real estate agents in an area, um, how to share their stories and cool award programs for just those 500 and, you know, cool, uh, create cool special VIP and exclusive events just for that top 500 realtors. It's a true badge of honor and kind of an exclusive community to be a part of. This opened up a lot of advertising opportunities for vendors to want to offer their products or promote their services to the top realtors in their city versus a realtor who might just be doing, you know, two transactions a year. One realtor doing 200 transactions a year versus another realtor doing two transactions a year is very different in terms of uh, prospect value to like a title company, a lender, um, or just some type of vendor in the real estate space. So I mentioned the events um, that Remington does with all these realtors. So five years ago, Remington, I don't even know how we actually connected. It was on social media somehow. Um, But he invited me to speak at one of his masterclass events. It was a panel, social media panel. And I talked about social media stuff. And that day, not only did I have so much fun um, talking to realtors and, and, and have, having the message all be about, you know, social media for realtors, but I sold more, you know, one-on-one consulting and coaching um, 
packages that day than I have ever sold in my entire career. Well, at the time, I didn't think, hmm, this could be a niche that I could double down on. You know, there's a lot of important things that happen after that, that, that I that I wanted to do that has got me to this point. But I just think it's funny that five years ago, you know, I was talking with Remington about realtors and you know, the opportunity was just kind of there, but everything happens for a reason. So flash forward to 2022, um, or maybe it was 2021. Yeah, I believe it was 2021. Towards the end of 2021, Remington asked me again to speak at a master class. This is five years later after the first one. You know, Remington said, you know, when I was there speaking at this event where there might be anywhere from 80 to 150 realtors each time that I was one of the more requested speakers to come back, which means, oh, the market wants to hear and learn about social media. So I come to his, to, to his uh, master class and, you know, I'm like, yeah, dude, I would love to do that. But I asked him, I said, hey, you know, do you have any speaker budget, you know, for your speakers? And he's like, no, man, you know the drill. You know, we, we invite people to highlight them and it's really just kind of giving value to the realtor. And I'm like, okay, no problem. And I said, can I sell or can we work together and you and me put together a little workshop where we sell tickets at the master class and the workshop is like three weeks after the master class and we limit it to like 10 realtors. And he loved the idea because, you know, Remington is always someone who wants to add more value to realtors. Um, and Remington and I, we've kind of joked for, for many years about how we need to work together somehow. So we did this masterclass. We promote, promoted the workshop and got a lot of attendance to it and had just so much positive feedback from everyone who went through the workshop. They all said, every realtor said, we want more of this. Please do more of this. Let us know when you do more of this stuff. Um, and so that kind of flashes, you know, flash forwards about a year of, you know, me kind of figuring out, you know, a lot of different uh, current clients that I had at the time and kind of transitioning to, you know, what would it look like to create Rocket Fuel for Realtors, partner with Remington and only work with just these particular type of people? Well, I'm not a realtor myself. And, you know, at the time I would say realtor, not realtor. So, you know, to be able to build a business selling to one type of demographic, I would need to learn what they're thinking about, what they care about. And so Remington offered me a director of marketing position at Indie Real Producers Magazine. So I get to work with him, you know, pretty much every single day. And I get to talk to 100 plus realtors every single month, sometimes even more than that. Um, and so I get to learn what makes them tick, what makes them angry, what, what makes them excited, what's working for them, what's not working for them. What are they thinking about? What are the ways that the current market is impacting their business and how they need to uh, double down in their marketing or different kind of things like that. And so with the help of Remington, who knows you know, this real estate world so well, and then of course, with talking to so many realtors, you know, this, this whole thing just kind of made a lot of sense. Um, so that kind of flash forward to now where we're at Remington and I, we both own Rocket Fuel for Realtors. We have a coaching side and we have an agency side. The agency side is still being built out. The coaching side is, you know, very prolific and, and very prevalent and, and we're selling a lot of packages on the coaching side. Um, we've got a free newsletter that might have a link to the newsletter in the description. And once a week, I share some social media tips, strategies, free content ideas. You don't want to miss that. It's again, free. I keep it short and simple. Um, and that kind of leads to our next offer. We have a group coaching offer. We have a private Facebook group with a lot of different content and, and strategies and deeper things that you won't get from the newsletter that you find in the Facebook group. And then as well as a one hour coaching call, um, that is kind of a collective learning environment for all the different realtors who might be paying for that group coaching. In that call, I kind of kick it off with like a 10 to 15 minute strategy session. Then the rest is open Q and A for everyone who wants to learn or ask questions. Um, we, we've got a lot of different offers that, that we have and that we're testing, you know, like I mentioned, we do these workshops kind of, you know, every now and then uh, we don't really have any consistency behind that just yet. And then we have the agency side where, where we can actually manage your social media and potentially in the future, even create content for you. Um, but that that's kind of really my story, um, high level, I guess, if you will, about social media and just kind of how we got to where we are now. Um, but the riches are in the niches. That That's what they say. But when I say, for me, riches, what's important for me in a working environment is not just how much money I make, but it's how motivated I am and how energized I am, how, you know, if I have stuff that I need to do and get done and it's in the evening, do I dread doing it? Or am I like, oh yeah, I want to get this done. Um, do I feel fulfilled with the type of work 
that I'm doing? Do I feel like I'm impacting people? And then their lives are actually being impacted and changed. And do I constantly feel that? I'm very unique in just kind of my relationship with work. And so with Rocket Fuel for Realtors, where I'm focusing just on the niche of realtors and really building programs and packages and strategies and techniques and processes just for realtors, it is like light bulbs open up in ways that I never, ever thought. You know, real estate is a niche. I, you know, I've worked with all different types of companies, different individuals, Fortune 500, you know, small businesses, Fortune 100, all different types of businesses and entrepreneurs and people and social media. Real estate is a niche. But what's crazy is once, I, once I've started to really focus on this niche, more opportunities and more ways to double down and more ways to impact people actually present themselves. You know, the, the limiting belief might think, oh, uh, I might not be able to make enough money if I only focus on realtors or it might not just be enough of a market. Well, for one, there's a lot of realtors out there. But number two, it's just kind of beautiful when, at least from what I'm learning right now with this new business, doubling down into a niche is there actually isn't less opportunity. There's more opportunity that, that gets presented um, within that niche. So I'm excited. Um, I'm engaged to a beautiful uh, lady named uh, Ashley, and she's a manager of a Starbucks downtown in Indianapolis. And you know, this year is just going to be a really good year for the business. And I'm, you know, I, look, I'm on YouTube. I haven't made a YouTube video like this in a long time. Um, so I'm excited, and I appreciate everyone who's on this journey with us. And you can look forward to. Um, just a lot more content on this YouTube channel, YouTube shorts, long form video interviews, um, client breakdowns and case studies and testimonials and all different kind of stuff. Um, but we'll start small. We'll crawl first before we run. So that's kind of overview, high level, my story and how Rocket Fuel got started and just kind of a little bit of the vision um, that you guys can start to think, um, kind of think about for Rocket Fuel for Realtors. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.